So I recently reviewed the new Surface Pro for 2017. I got some amazing questions, and so that's what today's Q&A is all about. I was going to buy the Surface Book and the new pen. Would I get the 4,000 levels of pressure sensitivity, or would it be the same 1,000? Microsoft hasn't been very specific about this, if the pressure sensitivity is backwards compatible, which tells me that the answer is probably no. I also got a lot of questions that were roughly the same idea, which was, can I take this new pen and get a lot of the benefits on my older Surface? Surface device. Now, I only have a Surface Pro 3 lying around, so I was only able to test it on that. And the short answer for me was no. I didn't really notice a huge improvement on my Surface Pro 3 using the new Surface Pro Pen. And a lot of people wanted to know, what about the Surface Book? What about the Surface Studio? What about the Surface Pro 4? I, I, I have a hunch that what is happening is what makes the jitter better, what makes the pressure sensitivity work better, is the fact that the pen is working in conjunction with the sensors in the screen. So the short answer is that it's going to work. However, I don't think you're gonna get the value. I don't think you're gonna get the better quality pen working on an older device. I could be wrong on that, but I would say for now, it's probably better off to hold off on purchasing the $100 pen and hoping to get the same results. If I I uh, have the opportunity to test it or if I find some other people online who have tested this sort of thing, I'll definitely be reporting back here or on Twitter. LOL at the T-square. Yeah, sometimes when I record these videos, I misspeak. Last video I did, I mentioned that I was using a T-square and I wasn't and I corrected it on screen. And I guess people think it's funny when I put the little corrections on the screen and have fun with them. So I guess I'm gonna continue doing that. Do you prefer the new Surface Pro or the Mobile Studio Pro more? So several months back, I did a whole video comparing the Surface Pro to the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro. And I think my answer now is the same as it was before. Uh, it's a little easier to answer that now because there's less pen jitter, which is one of the big things that kind of turn me off to the Surface Pro just a little bit, but there's so much about the Surface Pro I like, mostly just the full mobility of it, how easy it is to carry around. The Wacom Mobile Studio Pro uh, was a great drawing experience. I would even go so far as to say a better drawing experience. Actually, I feel very comfortable saying that it's a better drawing experience. But I feel with the Surface Pro, you get 90% of the way there, but it's so much easier to carry around. Uh, it's so much easier to just stop what you're doing, close it up, carry it like a notebook and take it anywhere else and keep working. That convenience for me personally is huge. For other people who don't really move around much and are cool with something that uh, is somewhat mobile, I think the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro might be a better option for them. I got the new Surface Pro as well and I must say I'm quite disappointed. I'm not sure how the pen measures 4,096 levels of pressure sensitivity, but if I lightly drag the pen across the screen, it still does not leave a mark. This is called initial activation force and one of the things that I notice is that it is dramatically, well, I'm not gonna say dramatically, it has been improved in the new Surface Pro, but it's not as good as say the Wacom pens or the Apple Pencil or some of the other stuff that's out there. What's funny about this is the first two times I reviewed the Surface, I didn't even notice. I, I guess I'm just not a very light sketcher. A lot of people who are, this is the type of thing that kind of pushes them away from something like the Surface. So that's something to take into account, you know, while you're trying to figure out what device you wanna get. Will you review the new iPad Pro? Right now, the answer is no. And the main reason why is I feel Feel that the Apple Pencils actually was really good before, and they haven't changed the Apple Pencil. The main thing that's changed in the new iPad Pros is the refresh rate. I've heard a lot of good things about the refresh rate, that the scrolling is smoother, that it's better for drawing, and that sort of thing. But since I feel like the iPad Pro, from a drawing standpoint with the Apple Pencil, was so good before that it's like, it's a step up, but it's not like something I necessarily need to test. I, I would just basically use it and go, yeah, it's a little bit better, that's cool. I There's just not enough there for me to review. Uh, some of the things I am gonna be looking into are uh, big time are the changes to iOS 11 when it comes out this fall. But I think as far as reviewing the hardware, it's a step up. I can still definitely recommend it. I have no problem doing that. Uh, but I don't think my thoughts on it in general have changed since the last version. Also, it seems like with the Surface stuff, not a lot of artists are necessarily jumping in and doing reviews of that, which is another reason I, why I like to cover it. Whereas the iPad Pro and Apple Pencil, it seems like there are a billion artists out there on YouTube kind of posting their thoughts and opinions and stuff like that. Uh, so it just seems like as far as niches go, there's more of a need for artists to jump in there and review Windows products than there are for artists to jump in and review Apple products. Would you be able to test the pressure sensitivity on Adobe Animate CC? So I got a lot of questions on this. I guess there was a problem with uh, wonky pen pressure in Adobe Animate. So 
Let's test it out. So I've been trying to find exactly what the problem is with the Adobe Flash. I've been trying to check out the Adobe communities all weekend and unfortunately, they're just not loading for me on any browser or on any system. So I can't investigate to the depth that I uh, wanted to investigate. I wanted to dig in and figure out you know, what is the specific problem that people are having and then test those specific problems. And unfortunately, I, I can't find it because Adobe's forums are down. Um, but I am gonna test the, the brush pressure. First things first is I'm not totally familiar with Adobe Animate. However, I have been using it a little bit recently to do some animations myself. And usually when I select the brush in my tools, at least on my Mac, one of the options is brush pressure and I'm just not getting that option. So I don't know if that is the problem that people are having or if there's a different problem that people are having, but that seems to be the issue that I'm having as I just can't get any brush pressure icon to show up. So if if that's your problem, that, that hasn't been fixed. Another thing that I came across while I was researching is people are having issues with delayed strokes and I don't seem to be having too much of an issue with that when I'm drawing. Uh, none of my strokes are being delayed. So if that's the problem that you were looking for, that appears to be better. Although when I was doing fast cross hatching, I've noticed that not all of the, um, the lines actually show up. So that might be the delay you're talking about too. That appears to be happening here. So I'm sorry, I blame Adobe because for the past week their forum has been down. I apologize if I can't answer this question as thoroughly as I want to. Saw some jaggy lines while you were drawing the chin on the first sketch. The problem with just drawing on something and then giving my general feedback on it, and part of the reason why I've developed these tests is because oftentimes when I'm drawing just with any stylus, whether it's a Wacom, even the Apple Pencil and Procreate, sometimes I'll get some wobble to my line. And I think the reason for it is a lot of the time, just my hand isn't the steadiest hand in the world. Now I will say that on the Surface Pro, the jitter is dramatically improved. However, I did notice some. Was that the reason why there was a little bit of wobble on the chin or was it my hand? It's really hard to tell. That's why I've kind of created these tests so I have a way of judging it from app to app, from device to device and that sort of thing. Uh, so yeah, I, I still stand by it. Jitter's dramatically improved. It's gotten to the point where it just doesn't bother me at all anymore. Um, yeah, uh, some people are gonna notice it. I think for most people, it's gonna be just fine. Can you please review the Genius Easy Pen M610X graphic tablet? I've never heard of that. Okay, so I just Googled it and I guess it came out like six or seven years ago. I, I don't know if I can even buy that anymore. I'm sorry. Could you comment on the parallax effect of the pen? What annoyed me about the old Surface Pro pen was that the tip of the pen did not always hit the computer where I thought it did. When I am in Adobe Photoshop, I see this little icon on the screen that shows where my brush tip is. So I don't don't necessarily notice any displacement of uh, the brush itself, the tip of the brush. However, when I go up here to the top of the screen, I can see that the uh, it is off by a couple of pixels. Uh, so you can, I don't know how well I can see that from that angle. Maybe if I move the pen, it's really hard to record and draw at the same time. Yeah, it looks like the pen tip is a couple pixels off from where the actual tip appears. It kind of depends on the angle of the pen, actually. Uh, when I tilt the pen, it's off a little bit. When I'm directly up and down, it seems to be uh, maybe two or three pixels above the pen tip itself. Uh, so there is a little bit of displacement, but it doesn't seem too bad. So there we go. Well, those are the questions. If you have any more, let me know down in the comments below. As always, you can hit me up on Twitter. That's all I've got for this week. I'll see you guys later.